housing conditions have found that people who pay low rent really pay a high price. According to the Washington Post, about 40% of residents living in Montgomery County's so-called International Corridor complained of chipped or peeling paint. County officials are worried the problem could lead to lead poisoning in children if they ingest the chips or dust. Federal law requires landlords to disclose whatever information they may know about the lead paint content in a dwelling. Well, parents are also being warned about the danger of toxins in their home. They could be linked to increases in cancer and learning disabilities in their children. With us now to explain is environmental scientist Michael Wisner. Michael, thank you very much for being here. What kind of toxins are we talking about? Well, in the home, uh, we can have as many as 10,000 different chemical compounds, not all toxins. Uh, I think one of, the one of the most important ones is the ones you just mentioned, uh, which is lead. Uh, it's something that's ubiquitous in the environment. You can find it in almost every one of our bodies, and it's been linked to learning disabilities, reduced IQ. Often, scientists that I know are linking it to misdiagnosis of attention deficit disorder when, in fact, lead can cause those exact same symptoms. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we walk. I think 40% of the lead that we're exposed to and our families are exposed to, we walk in to our home on the soles of our shoes. See, that's what's interesting. We're talking about people looking at uh, paint content and whether there's lead, and we think it has to be something on the wall that our children may be peeling and ingesting. But walking on our shoes, where are we picking this up? Well, Just well the street grime pollution goes up, really? it comes down, we walk on our shoes. I think the Japanese for centuries had the right idea. They leave their shoes at the door. And so that's what we should be doing. If you did that, your family and you could reduce reduce your lead exposure by 40% for free. Wow. And, and that's that's in addition to any of the lead-based paints that you like were mentioned in your earlier story. What else I mean, can we do? Well, you know, I think one of the things we have to do is we have to look at the chemicals that have built up in our bodies because we can handle all the external things, use non-toxic cleaners, mm -hmm. not use pesticides in the home, there's way to kill bugs. Many things take your shoes out the door. But then you've got the toxins in the body. And I researched a book that was on the best times, yes, we'll New York Times bestseller this year by L. Ron Hubbard, Clear Body, Clear Mind, myself and a group of scientists. We found that you can detoxify chemicals that have built up in yours, my, the average person's body that our own Environmental Protection Agency says every American has about 60 to 90 toxic chemicals stored in their bodies. So if we reduce the internal chemical pollution and reduce some of the external chemical pollution, we're seeing dramatic improvements in health and well-being. What are we doing, though? How do we get rid of what's already built up in our bodies over 20, 30, 40, 50 years before you came along and others like you to tell us that this problem existed? Well, the problem is, is that these are synthetic man-made chemicals, so our body's not set up normally to digest them and break them down like food. Uh, the, the Hubbard program that's covered in the book uh, actually uses a combination of physical therapy exercise, uh, nutritional supplementation, and sauna. You can actually sweat these sweat things the out through the, through the skin. When we researched scientifically the Hubbard program, we actually collected sweat, and sure enough, during the, the participants, they had DDT, PCBs, toxic chemicals, lead, mercury, some who smoked pot had THC, literally sweating out of the body. Mm -hmm. And what we found was they had improvements of IQ and general health when they were done. So it looks like it could make sense not just for someone in a chemical exposure, like on the job, we treated firemen and police officers and so forth, but you and I, the regular person. I read where you were talking about the importance of baking soda in helping to rid our homes of uh, these toxins. Well, you, there's so many things that you can do to clean your home. I mean, you don't have to use toxic chemicals. A lot of the chemicals you buy at a regular hardware store, if you were using those in industry, they'd have you under... Uh, air mask, rubber gloves, respirators, and yet we use these same things in our home. You can clean most everything in your home very well with baking soda, water, vinegar, lemon oil, lemon juice. You can clean just about everything. You don't need to buy the more expensive, mm -hmm. more potentially toxic chemical cleaners that you buy at the store. You know, once you're finished with the baking soda in the refrigerator, they always say pour, pour, it, pour it down the drain. Mm -hmm. Now there's a new report that the gunk that builds up in our pipes right. could be one of the uh, places where Legionnaire's disease well, when develops. You, well, it's a, it's a, I'm from Philadelphia originally. When you get dark, wet places with lacks of oxygen, they are breeding grounds for bacteria, moles, and so forth. Anywhere from your home duct, heating ducts, how many times do people remind to have someone cl clean those ducts out? Or the filter in your uh, air conditioning heater mm -hmm. unit, how many times does someone go, oh, I forgot to replace that? Those are the kind of places and pipes, particularly at the junction of pipes, where chemicals, viruses, bacteria can grow and build up. So I definitely think that, you know, uh, using a water filter is a good idea in your home. It's cheaper than bottled water. Uh, using, having your air 
heating systems cleaned every every so often once a year at least replacing the filters in your units very important if you want more information i mean your listeners can go to clear body clear mind dot com i've got a lot of information on that website for it look at detox vacation because that's the other side of it and you can save yourself a lot of money and a lot of potential health problems and that's the main thing saving those health problems especially for your children you bet Michael Wisner, thank you very much. And, of course, we will link you to that web website, clearmindy, clearmindy.com, with our website, WUSATV9.com. Eight forty, the time right now. Some unsettling facts to consider this morning about your house and your health. EPA research says the country's worst air pollution is inside our homes. Most cleaning products release volatile organic compounds, VOCs, and they create ozone and smog. And 80% of cancers are linked to environmental causes. Yikes. And we're talking about your body. We're talking about your health and your home this morning. Um, there are toxins in our homes. You could be exposed to them every day, and your kids could be exposed to them, too. Pretty scary, isn't it? Well, uh, Michael Wisner is the founder of HealthMed, a nonprofit corpor corporation that specializes in diagnos diagnosing and treating chemical and drug exposures. And you work with Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Melissa Etheridge. How did you become interested in toxins in the home when you're hanging out with the stars? Well, actually, I researched a book years ago with an independent scientific foundation in L.A., uh, written by L. Ron Hubbard called Clear Body, Clear Mind, which has been on the New York Times bestseller list this last year. But we were a research team that looked at people who were being exposed, like farm workers, industrial painters, uh, people who had pesticide exposure, Cherno children at Chernobyl who were exposed to cesium-138. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for a way of detoxifying these people from chemical exposure. What we found in our clinical practice was that everybody literally that walked in the door okay, had le measurable levels of things like lead, mercury, pesticides in their bodies, like you and me, not somebody working on a farm or what have you. So that got me very curious. Where is this coming from? What is the cumulative effect? Here in Minnesota, for instance, uh, you have an, addi uh, an additional worry that we wouldn't in Los Angeles, and that is you have tight building syndrome, much more common than we have in Los Angeles, because you get really cold in the winter. So a lot of your structures are built to be tight, uh, energy efficient, and so on. Well, the indoor you know, pollution statistics are that we probably have 100 times more chemicals inside our homes than outside. But are these the chemicals, as far as the government has allowances for certain types of chemicals or even heavy metals that are in your body, are mm -hmm. these within the tolerances? Or are these looking at a different set of tolerances? Well, it's actually looking at different tolerances. Because, like, what is the cumulative effect? We know what the, quote, quote, safe level of lead in your body is, okay, yet, or mercury or what have you. But what's the cumulative effect? I mean, every American, you know, watching today has 100 known toxics stored in their bodies. And the scientific evidence would suggest that these can be linked to things like your previous guest, to Alzheimer's, increases in MS, increases in this... Uh, this thing called uh, attention deficit disorder, autism, these neurological kind of disorders are being linked to an increased number of chemical toxins, particularly heavy metals in the body. And so we haven't linked them definitively, but there's definitely scientific evidence that indicates that. So what I tell people to do is two things. One, clean up your home. There are safer alternatives. You know, if people just left their shoes at the front door like the Japanese have done for centuries, we need to reduce your family's exposure to lead by 40% for free. Because most of the lead in our homes, we walk into our homes on the soles of our uh, shoes. Huh. So just have house slippers or house shoes you wear only in the home. And then for the body, in terms of chemical exposure and buildup in the, in, inside the system, you do a program like it's covered in clear body, clear our mind where you can safely do a detoxification program reduce these internal exposures we should point out that uh, this is a book by L Ron Hubbard who right. is also connected with you know uh, other types of teachings and thinkings that uh, folks like John Travolta and Tom Cruise follow which is Scientology sure well I mean mr. Hubbard wrote Dianetics back in 1950 he's one of the best uh, ever published scientific uh, science fiction writers you know so he's done a lot of things as a humanitarian but this book is not uh, a religious in any nature particularly it's really open uh, it's all major bookstores Walden's uh, borders have you know so, uh, sell the book but as, a, a, can pick as it a litmus test is Scientology considered religious in any way Scientology is a religion, to my knowledge. Okay. I mean, it's a bona, bona fide religion. The book, though, is something that's available broadly. More science than tology. Well, yeah, I was did okay. the scientific. I did the I okay. did the scientific research on it. All right, thanks, Michael yeah. Wisner, uh, uh, for joining us this morning and talking about detoxifying yourself. Le leave your shoes off. That's a good idea to do, yeah. no matter what. Go barefoot. Just be happier anyway. Uh, when we come back.
September 11, hundreds of emergency responders as well as civilians were exposed to dangerous chemicals and debris that was produced after the towers collapsed. Many are taking medication used by Scientologists to relieve symptoms of asthma and other illnesses. But some are taking advantage of an alternative program they say has astounding results. CBS 2 News reporter Rose Walia has the story. Does this work? Absolutely. Absolutely works. For nearly a year, retired firefighter Joe Higgins has been singing the praises of the downtown medical clinic in Lower Manhattan. He walked through its doors after September 11th because he was experiencing traumatic nightmares, depression, insomnia, and asthma, for which he took seven pills a day. That same acrid smell that we smelled every day was in your pores and in your lungs and, you know, up your nose and... I mean, we knew it. The method is based on the teachings of author L. Ron Hubbard, who founded the Church of Scientology. It requires a complete physical exam, gradual increased doses of niacin or vitamin B3, and then a workout. It increases circulation, and in that combination of the niacin and the exercise that gets the heart rate beating at aerobic range, the patient's going to mobilize fat very rapidly and dump the residuals of the toxins from the fat back into the bloodstream. Saunas help to extract the toxins further, and in several cases, participants have produced blue, black, orange, and yellow beads of sweat. Clinic officials say the colors represent the different chemicals and toxins carried in the body. Israel Miranda of the uniformed EMT and paramedics of New York worked for months at Ground Zero. After 22 days that I completed the program, I had the en more energy than I had than before 9-11. The program, which normally costs $5,200, is being offered for free. It's currently being funded by private donors, some of whom are celebrity Scientologists like Tom Cruise. Nobody's selling you Scientology. Absolutely not. I wouldn't be sitting here if they were. We did contact a spokesman for the New York Fire Department regarding the clinic. He said the department did not endorse the project because their doctors do not believe it is medically certified detox program. But they say if firefighters want to take part in it, they are free to do so. So far, 140 men have participated. Todd Mary. Rose. Welcome to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. How many poisons do you have under your kitchen sink? How can you fight back if you have multiple cirrhosis? You'll find answers to these questions and much more on today's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. This is Frank Jordan welcoming you to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, where today we'll visit with toxin expert Michael Wisner to discuss toxins in our homes, often under the kitchen sink. Let us tell you how to avoid the dire consequences of our own potential self-destruction in our homes. And I'll talk about multiple cirrhosis on Frankly Speaking. What is MS and what can you do if you're diagnosed positive? On Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, we'll put the care back in health for you. If you've got a few minutes, let's talk. Be right back with Frankly Speaking. This program is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products, like the NSC Gold Multiple Vitamin, which delivers a high-quality daily nutrient blend with added minerals and enzymes. The NSC Gold Multiple Vitamin, for enhanced health to you and your family.
Multiple cirrhosis, or MS, is a lifelong chronic disease. During an MS attack, inflammation occurs in areas of the white matter of the central nervous system, which contain nerve fibers that are the site of MS lesions. These inflamed nerve fibers with MS lesions occur in random patches that we call plaques. The plaque inflammation is followed by destruction of myelin, which insulates nerve cell fibers in the brain and the spinal cord. Myelin facilitates the smooth, high-speed transmission of electrochemical messages between the brain, the spinal cord, and the rest of the body. Symptoms of MS may be mild or severe and of long duration or short, and they appear in various combinations. The initial symptoms of MS often include blurred or double vision and red-green color distortion. Many MS patients experience muscle weakness in their extremities and difficulty with coordination and balance. Most people with MS exhibit the feeling of pins and needles, itching or tingling. Some may experience pain or loss of feeling, numbness. About half of the people with MS experience difficulties with concentration, attention, memory, and judgment. Such impairments are usually mild and rarely disabling. Intellectual and language abilities are generally spared. Be aware heat may cause temporary worsening of many MS symptoms. Physicians use a neurological examination and take a medical history when they suspect MS. Imaging technologies are used such as MRI. That provides an anatomical picture of the lesions and an MRS which yields information about the biochemistry of the brain. Physicians may also study patients' cerebrospinal fluid and an antibody called immunoglobulin G. Unfortunately, no single test detects MS at this time with certainty. There's as yet no cure for MS. Steroids are often prescribed, but steroids do not stop the progression of MS over time. Since some steroids can reduce the duration and the severity of attacks, adverse side effects, but they should always be evaluated. Supplements such as coenzyme Q10 and MSM are considered helpful, while persons with MS generally have a deficiency of gamma-linolenic acid, or GLA. Drink plenty of water and eat primarily organically grown foods. The goal of therapy are threefold, to improve recovery from attacks, to prevent or lessen the number of relapses, and to halt disease progression. The cause of MS remains elusive, but most people with MS have a normal life expectancy. The vast majority of MS patients are mildly affected, but in the worst cases, MS can render a person unable to write, speak, or walk. Scientists are looking into the body's autoimmune system, infectious agents, and genetics as culprits in MS. Studies into these areas strengthen the theory that MS is the result of a number of factors rather than a single gene or cause. Frankly speaking, MS is debilitating, but great progress is being made, and if you have symptoms, contact your health care professional. If confirmed, begin a lifestyle and program to assure you optimize your being healthy, wealthy, and wise. This program is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products, like NSC 24 Original and NSC 100 Extra Strength Immunition with MG Beta Glucan, both U.S. patented medical school researched and designated superior in peer-reviewed scientific reports. And remember, MG Beta Glucan is found only at NSC Immunition Products. NSC 24 Original for daily use with the NSC Gold Multiple Vitamin and NSC 100 Extra Strength for immunition to win your body war. Today on Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, we're going to be discussing toxins in the home. What do you have under your kitchen sink or in your bathroom or any of uh, many other places in the home that could be dangerous to your health and that of your family? My guest today is Michael Wisner. Michael is an environmental scientist. We're thrilled to have you here, Michael. Thanks, Mike. Nice to be uh, here. All of your experience is very impressive, plus you're founder of Health Med, where you've literally helped thousands in detoxification. But today, let's talk about the toxins in the home. There's, I found this just an astounding statistic. More children under four die of accidental poisonings in the home 
than are accidentally killed by guns. That's an amazing statistic. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't think many of us realize it, but most fatal accidents, injuries, poisonings do happen in the home. Uh, studies have shown that women, for instance, who work in the home have a higher incidence uh, of certain ovarian cancers than women who actually work out of the home, even in a factory. And in fact, the, the science would indicate that it's probably because in the home, they're not protected from the myriad of small amounts of chemicals that we buy at the grocery store, the hardware store, and so forth, where if they're working in a factory, someone's monitoring the air, putting a respirator on them, sure. and so forth. And so there seems to be, in, in America particularly, the home can be actually one of the most toxic places to be alert about. Well, after going to your website, I was frightened. I, <laughs> I didn't sleep that night till I could get up the next I'm morning sorry, here, and start I, moving things. Out. Well, no, I, you know, you can literally save some lives. I, I'm sorry don't. we don't have enough time for you to go into a home and just take a home at random and go through, but you really could frighten people. Well, that, and we want to frighten you, the viewers, and the reason we want to frighten you is because we're talking about our health and that of our children. Well, let's just say, uh, how prevalent are these chemicals in the home? Well, we, you know, 100 years ago in this country, we had about 100 chemical compounds in the average American home. Today, that number is 8 to 10,000. Now, that's not all toxic chemicals, but obviously there's many, uh, from waxes to glues to polishes to oven cleaners to window cleaners to carpet cleaners, spot removers, wallpaper, uh, paints, and on and on, the number just goes up and up. And while not, none of those, I don't think you're going to get toxic from your toaster, okay? I, <laughs> you know, in other words, I don't think that we have to live under a lot of fear, but I think you're right. I think we have to be vigilant. We have to wake up about it because the cumulative effect of these things are what are, are, are of what of real concern to us today in medicine because the cumulative effect can suppress the immune system and be connected to other diseases. Well, and that, you know, my area of expertise in science is the, the immune area. And this is one, uh, toxins in the air, of course, we hear a lot about, but toxins in the home, we know we're supposed to wash our food. We know we're supposed to wash our hands. But you know, if we're doing that in the sink area, don't we have a time bomb usually sitting right under that kitchen sink? Well, you do. I mean, you, you should take a look at what we do have on our kitchen sink because, you know, when you look at it, you can clean almost everything in a home with baking soda, vinegar, water, and lemon juice, okay? So what you have on the sink that have often do not have labels. In other words, you could buy detergent or uh, oven cleaners or what have you, and there is no federal law that requires that the chemicals in those are labeled. Okay, there's no, if you check the labels in your grocery uh -huh. store on waxes and, and, bar, and, and things like that, there's no chemical labels on them. And so there are many toxins like benzene and xylene and so forth that can be toxic to a, to a child or to us even if we apply them to surfaces. So you can really clean the house with safe, safer alternatives. Like for instance, this uh, uh, ec ecologically minded uh, detergent uh, has no toxic chemicals in it. It's basically natural soap. You can clean almost anything, you know, laundry and so forth forth with that. This you can use to clean fruits and vegetables. If you can't get organic fruits and vegetables, you can cl safely clean fruits and vegetables with residual pesticides off of with that. Um, now, I, are these found in most supermarkets, or do you have to go to specialty health stores? Normally, you'll find those in a health-oriented grocery store, like Whole Foods or Wild Oats. They'll normally have them. But more and more, your mainline grocery stores are carrying these kind of products. I know I buy those uh, in my home outside of uh, Los Angeles. Wonderful. They go to grocery store. Well, what about those? The, the ones we keep open and uh, some cleaning things for the tops of tables and so forth they have all the holes we keep those open the spray things that we spray the aerosols, we clean. The aerosols. what about these I've often warned that I, we're, let's say we're cleaning a glass top table mm -hmm. you're spraying it you've got this on you have small children doesn't that aerosol whether it's that or maybe it's mosquitoes or bugs or something you're spraying in the air doesn't that land on the floor? And what about our babies that are walking or crawling in that floor? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, I've been researching this for years. You know, uh, it started with looking at people really poisoned in the home uh, and treating them with detoxification uh, on a book that was written by Ellen Hubbard, Clear Body, Clear Mind, uh, a treatment program that we researched scientifically. We'd have children come in, and they typically had higher levels. Why? Because when we tested their blood or, or their tissue for toxic chemicals, they're on the ground, they're closer to the ground, they put their fingers in virtually every orifice of the human body, okay? They are, so anything you spray, anything that you apply to carpeting, to floor, 
to surfaces, they're closer to it. They breathe more often than we do. Their metabolism is faster than ours. Right. So they eat pound for pound more food than we do. And so they are particularly exposed. And as you well know better than I, their immune systems are going through changes and formations. They're not fully formed. So yes, children are particularly at risk. For instance, uh, well, for instance, a shoe. <laughs> I had to ask you about the shoe. Well, um, 40% of the lead that you and I and our families are exposed to, we walk in off the street grit on the bottoms of our shoe. And lead, as you know, is a toxic, neurotoxic, poisonous chemical. It's mostly from vehicular industrial exhaust, goes up in the air, falls down. We walk on it. We walk it into our homes. So I tell people, maybe the Japanese have had the right idea for centuries. When you get home, leave your street shoes at the door, in the, in the hallway or what have you, and have street uh, house slippers or house shoes you wear just in the home. If you do that, you'll reduce yours and your family's lead exposure by 40% for free. Amazing. By just doing that. So it's not just that paint on the wall. We better start worrying about the shoes. Absolutely. The majority comes now, right in off the street. i ask you, is there sure. somebody somewhere hopping? in the gym today because Absolutely. we have one of their shoes. Absolutely. <laughs> we're talking to Michael Wisner and we're talking about toxins in the home. As you see, we've got an apple and a board. You want to know what those are about too and so much more. What is not only under that sink, what about those toys, those plastic toys your children play with? We have the expert today. Michael Wisner is going to tell us about that and so much more on Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. We're here to educate you in good health. Let's start in the home and we're going to have a whole lot more for you. Don't you dare go away. This is going to be exciting. This program is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products, like the respiratory formula with its combination of MG beta glucan with other proven ingredients. Nutritionally enable your immune system to breathe easy with NSC Immunition Respiratory Formula. Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise today, we're visiting with Michael Wisner. We're talking about toxins in the home. So this does concern you. It concerns me in my home. Primarily concerns our children. Michael, I want to get back to what we were speaking about. We talked about lead from the shoe. Mm -hmm. if, as if that's not frightening enough, I see a board and an apple. Mm -hmm. Now, is what we've been taking to the, to the school well, uh, a problem for the teacher? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, I mean, one of the things like with, with an apple, uh, we legally apply post-harvest waxes to an apple. That's why it shines, unless it's organically raised. And in that wax, which is basically the same as car wax, okay, they can add fungicides to preserve the shelf life of the apple without any notice to us. Okay, so in fact, if you're buying non-organic fruits, okay, that they are probably, whether it's a peach or an apple, a cucumber or a watermelon, they have treated with fungicide and wax. I don't know about you, but I'd prefer to eat an apple, not car wax in my tummy. Yes. So what I tell people, like, for instance, this is a great example. This is a product, and you can use hot water and natural soap at home to clean that apple's skin off, okay? If you can't find organic apples or organic fruits, it's a safe thing to do. And I would surely tell people, eat apples, they're good for you. Okay. Okay, but now I know one of the situations I've read in the news recently where we have the new treaty with Mexico where they can bring fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. in. Isn't there a major situation where it's not always as closely controlled down there with pesticides and they what can't. they add? Well, in fact, in this country, it's absolutely true. In this country, when we find a chemical like DDT, pesticide is harmful to human health and environment. Do our chemical companies all, you know, ben benevolent, benevolently collect them and dispose of them safely? No. They ship them to third world countries that don't have our laws. So Africa, South America, Asia. So where do our fruits and vegetables come from in the winter? Africa, South America, and Asia. We've testified in Congress on this. It's called the circle of poison. So what I tell people, a good rule of thumb is, buy fruits and vegetables when they're in season because you're going to then less eat, have the chance of eating pesticide-ridden fruits and vegetables. Okay, so when we travel, what do we do? Do we take uh, some of this or we just be sure we wash them? And what about when we eat out? Are there any safeguards as we travel? We eat in restaurants? You know what? I just say eat what you like. I, again, I'm not going to tell people you got to go on top of Mount Shasta, live in a bubble, and eat roots and tubers. We're going to have to live <laughs> life and travel, you know. But I think you, if you, your smart things to do is if, they, if there are restaurants that serve organic fruits and vegetables, great. Always eating lower fat is better because 
just like the human body, these toxins primarily accumulate in the fat tissue of animals. And so if we're eating really fat beef that's not organically raised, it's going to have more pesticides in it than, say, organically raised beef or turkey or chicken. So eating, it's good for your stomach, it's good for your cholesterol, it's good to your waistline, but it's also lower in toxins. So let's say things to do. Well, I know, for instance, all the antibiotics they give animals, not to protect them from disease, but for growth. Right is in the fat of the meat. So Absolutely. trim it off. If you're going to eat the red meat, trim it off. Absolutely. We were amazed when I started Health Med, these clinics years ago, and we were looking at this program that Hubbard had written in Clear Body, Clear Mind, the book, and we were doing scientific research. We were amazed. We were actually doing fat biopsies of people like you and I coming in, and they were loaded with DDT, the pesticide, benzene, chlordane that was used for killing termites. And in fact, when we did the program, we got these chemicals out. But that was just the regular person coming in. These weren't chemically chemical workers or farm workers, just people like you and I. And EPA, our Environmental Protection Agency, substantiates that. Literally every one of us is walking around with 60 to 90 of these toxic chemicals yeah. stored in our fat. Now you know, probably as well or better than I, what that cumulative buildup over five years, over 10 years, or does to the immune system. And that's where the risk is. And it's dangerous because it's insidious. We don't see it. You know, it's not like somebody drank something from under the kitchen yeah. sink that we, they shouldn't. We sort of know what to do in emergency medicine. But when that happens slowly over time, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, the cumulative effect on the immune system, on the body's defensive, can be devastating. I think it's why we see increases in certain diseases like uh, female um, breast cancer. You know, it's, it's almost a pandemic compared to 50 years ago today. Uh, increases, I'm sure you see in MS. Why are, what are some of the environmental triggers that be contributing to that? We have fibromyalgia. Absolutely. Same thing. Parkinson's. What are some of the triggers that go into this? Well, let's talk about what we can do about it. Sure. Uh, one of the things, we have bug sprays. West Nile virus now is everywhere. So they say, well, use a bug spray that has DEET in it. But sure. Other bug sprays. I mean, you go in the grocery store. There's hundreds and hundreds. We come home, we use those. They're in most homes. And what, what's an alternative? I'm really glad you asked. Because one, a USC major study by Dr. John Peters showed in households that use bug sprays in LA, household, regular stuff you get at the supermarket, compared to households that didn't, the incidence of childhood leukemia was 700 times higher in homes where they just sprayed that stuff that's safe and legal once or twice a week. So there is a statistically significant increase in that rare childhood leukemia. So better not if you don't have to. So to answer your question, you can basically dispense with almost all bugs in the home with a couple of much safer alternatives. Pyrethrins from the plant. It's a natural derived pesticide from the plant. You can buy it at almost any Whole Foods, natural food store, and actually many hardware stores today. Pyrethrin. Okay, just straight from the flower. Uh, it's a natural pesticide. Again, you're not going to put it in your coffee, but it's not got the toxic effects that some of these organophosphate and organohalide pesticides have. Second thing, boric acid. Again, if you have pets or children, you don't want to just sprinkle the boric acid powder out where they could be exposed, but behind under kitchen sinks and so forth, it will kill cockroaches, ants, and so forth. These are very much less toxic exposures uh, to your children, your family, less expensive, and you don't need to be spraying these aerosol pesticides. Okay. Well, you have a website where you can go for more information, clearbodyclearmind.com. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to close here because we've just got a few minutes left. Uh, what are the, the effects of these various toxins on children and adults over time? And what concerns me, okay, we've inhaled them. Are there any long-term studies? About, you know, so many of these studies are done for five years. Sure. What about 10 years and 20 years? What are we doing to ourselves? We know external toxins. We also have internal toxins that we're producing. What, 2,000 food additives are legal now. Exactly, which is why I talked about, you know, often you, we can do all we can do to prevent external exposure, but then we have the internal exposure. We have to look at programs like in Clear Body, Clear Mind detoxification programs because we've got to get those chemicals out. There are things we can do that will reduce those exposures and those risks. I mean, long-term studies have shown that, for instance, we clearly see that lead, long-term exposure in a child, can reduce their IQ anywhere from 10 to 12 points. And the symptoms of lead exposure are things like redu reduced attention span, reduced IQ, reduced uh, short-term memory. Those are some things that are being misdiagnosed today as ADD, you know, which then gets treated with a drug like Ritalin, which is as strong as cocaine or methamphetamine, and we're seeing three-year-olds given this, where in fact, if you backed up a second, tested that child, which the U.S. Department of Health and Services now recommends for every child before the age of three for lead, found it did a detoxification program, you reverse the, the damage early on in the child's life.
Thank you, Michael. We appreciate it so much. And we want to thank our special guest, Michael Wisner. We want to invite you to call 888-881-8283 for information about our guests, our topic today, or any aspects of Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. Or go to our website at hwwshow.com for complete information, including guests and topics of future shows. Remember, you can call Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise radio broadcast with your health questions from 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern each weekday, 800-281-8255. This is Frank Jordan asking you to praise the Lord and pass the ammunition while being healthy, wealthy, and wise. Until next time, go in good faith and good health. We want to thank our guest, Michael Wisner. You be safe in your home. It's time for you to take control of your life, of your family, and know what you can do and what you can't do. That's what we're here for on Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. Until next time, go look under that sink, clean it all up. Bye-bye. Welcome to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. How do we get rid of the toxins in our bodies? Do caregivers need to get as well as give care? You'll find answers to these questions and much more on today's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. This is Frank Jordan welcoming you to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, where today we'll visit with detoxification expert Michael Wisner, and we're going to discuss how we rid our bodies of dangerous and damaging toxins. And I'll talk about caregivers on Frankly Speaking. You need to know the do's and don'ts of caregiving, both for those receiving and those giving care. On Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, we'll put the care back in health for you. If you've got a few minutes, let's talk. Be right back with Frankly Speaking. Did you know more than 25% of us have provided care for someone in our family or a friend during the past year? That means 50 million people are now caregivers, and that even if you haven't been, you probably will be. Most adult children believe they have an obligation to welcome their parents into their homes. The parents or family members need, they may be due to age, illness, or financial concerns, but the fact is, they are moving in. If you've been or are a caregiver, you know the constancy, lack of personal time, and sometimes guilt from wanting your life back, and that can lead to excess stress. That stress can lead to depression that can break your spirit and affects your ability to cope. Social withdrawal is another warning sign, the pulling away from friends and activities that once brought you pleasure. Be on guard against anger at the person you're caring for, anger at the system for not having a cure, and anger that people don't understand what you're going through, especially other family members not directly involved in daily care. Exhaustion and sleeplessness are dangerous from the constancy of 24-hour care. When you're exhausted, you make mistakes both in caregiving and taking care of your own family or job, including yourself. Irritability from why me? And will this never end? Trigger moodiness and negative responses, most often later regretted. Anxiety about the future, your loved one's welfare, and how you can cope. They're health breakers for yourself, in which case everyone loses. 
While your loved one's situation is of obvious concern, keep your own life and health in perspective. Set aside time for yourself and the things you like to do to relax and share life with friends and other family, particularly your children. Know that what is happening is not forever. You're doing a very hard job and you deserve relief from others. Ask other members of your family, your church, or your community to assist. When people offer to help, accept the offer and suggest specific things that will help you most. Educate yourself about your loved one's situation to enhance care quality and understanding. Join support groups for shared information, experiences, and even humor about everyone's joint miseries. You can both care and do what must be done without guilt, including difficult decisions involving assisted permanent care. If you base your decisions on what is best for all concerned without emotion being the primary influence. Frankly speaking, maintain balance. Be a caregiver, not only to your loved ones or friends, but to yourself. Through prayer and patience, while giving care with compassion, reason, and balance in your life, you can succeed for you and those you care for in being healthy, wealthy, and wise. This pro Today on Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, we're going to be talking about detoxification. How does that apply to you? You may be absolutely amazed what you have in your body that needs to be removed immediately. My guest today is Michael Wisner. Michael, welcome to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. Thank you, Frank. Michael is an environmental scientist. He's also the founder of HealthMed, mm -hmm. where you've helped literally thousands of people in a detoxification program. It's a little bit unique. How did you get into the area of, uh, did your mother say, Michael, I want you to be in the area of toxins when you grow up? Human I mean, I detoxification. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I've been an environmental advocate for many years, head of the Sierra Club Toxics Committee in the Northeast United States and Philadelphia region when I moved to Los Angeles, Southern California. Sierra Club Toxics chairman in Southern California is more than a full-time job, I, I found out. I Pretty toxic place. And an old friend of mine who went to Stanford University was looking into the subject of human chemical exposure and detoxification. And that was with a research foundation in Los Angeles. And I obviously was very fascinated with that subject, had dealt with those issues at Love Canal in Worcester, Massachusetts. If you saw the movie Civil Action, I was walking that site back in the 70s. And these were things that concerned me because what about your and my health if we're exposed to these chemicals, not just the environmental impacts. So when uh, the foundation came to me and they said, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, who's a humanitarian, has written a lot of stuff, has written a book, a program that's covered in the book Clear Body, Clear Mind, uh, for detoxification. Now, he's not a physician, is not making medical claims. We want to look at this independently, scientifically, because if, in fact, there was a way of safely reducing chemicals that we know store in the human body over time, like the pesticide DDT or the chemical and electrical devices, PCBs, you see this with firemen all the time, then we would have possibly, if it was safe and effective, a breakthrough benefit for someone else. And so we studied the program. Uh, in, on firemen, on farm workers, on electrical workers, on children at Chernobyl who were exposed to cesium-138 radioactive isotope, yeah. on uh, artists, pa painters, uh, on transformer workers in Yugoslavia. And we've done now, I guess over the last 15 years, 12 internationally published scientific peer-reviewed st studies that have been published on the Hubbard detoxification program, where it's safe and effective. And that's what really spawned my interest, because now we have a tool. It's not a panacea. It's not a cure-all. OK, but now we have a tool. We're using it right now with uh, World Trade Center uh, emergency personnel who were exposed to all sorts of chemicals in New York. OK, let's define detoxification. Good point. How do you define it? Well, detoxification can be a misnomer for some people because sometimes it's identified with drug detoxification, someone who's coming off drugs. While this program, the Hubbard program, can be used in conjunction with drug rehabilitation very successfully and has been for years, okay, detoxification I'm talking about is toxic chemicals that store in our bodies, removing them safely from the body. We do that normally, as you know, through our own liver function, kidney function, and so forth. But certain man-made chemicals, like pesticides, certain solvents, uh, oil-based chemicals will enter the human body, 
we have not evolved a mechanism for breaking them down, sure. and they will tend to store and build up in concentration over time in the human fat tissue. So basically, what we're talking about in detoxification today is taking a load off your liver. That's right, because the liver is overstressed, and we're not talking about colonics or fasting or herbal this or that. All those things might or might have some value, but we're talking about the gold standard in detoxification because the key thing is in reducing toxic body burdens is reducing those chemicals that store in the fatty tissue. Okay, now what are the true dangers? We hear the, the dangerous environmental hazards, but what are the dangers? How do they manifest themselves in our bodies? What's the result of ingesting or inhaling or even absorbing these toxins through our skin? Good, good. Good, po good point and good question. First of all, the danger is we don't sequester them uh, dormant in our fat tissue. If that was the case, you and I probably wouldn't even have to talk about this today. But we move fat from the fat stores into our bloodstream every day in terms of cholesterol and triglycerides. So you mobilize fat when you exercise, when you're under stress, when you sleep at night, when you diet. And when you move that fat into the bloodstream under those normal conditions, you're now moving the toxic chemicals that are stored in the fat into the bloodstream. The internal exposure to organs and more importantly the immune system occurs there. That's where the risk goes up. So as you know better than I, Frank, as you increase the number of bad agents in the bloodstream that are stressing the immune system, the good guys can get outnumbered or flanked. Bad guys start a colony and now you've got a tumor. So okay. those are some of the risks. Well, I want to tell you too, the immune system that Michael's talking about is responsible for removing the toxins through the lymphatic system and other mechanisms. And if your immune system is suppressed or compromised, and yours probably is, most people don't even realize. Yes. Now, you don't have a problem. If you're eating perfectly, you have great nutrition. If you're not stressed in any way, if you sleep as much as you should, if you have a lifestyle where you have moderate exercise three to five days a week, then really this probably doesn't apply to you. But you're probably a Martian then because most Americans aren't that way. <laughs> I don't think we lost a single viewer on <laughs> that right. one, Michael, so we're right. still with us. But right. that means that your immune system is not able to do all that it should do in detoxifying. And the normal functions of the liver then can be impaired because it's deterred or, or detoured from what it should be doing. Uh, what is, let, let's talk about metabolic poisoning, because I, I think that's where we're getting with this. What is metabolic poisoning? Well, my understanding is that if you take a look at the overload of toxins in the body, the congestion of the liver with that and so forth, and you detoxify someone, you're, you be, that, that load on the liver, that load on the system's immune system, uh, reduces your ability to me metabolize, break down nutrients for absorption, let alone other toxins. So sort of the dam starts to dam up faster. So by detoxification, and we've actually studied this in farm workers, for instance. We actually went back and did liver profiles on them six months, nine months, a year after detoxification. And sure enough, all their liver enzymes and performances showed that their liver was functioning better after detoxification. So I think it's a, it's a great weapon in our arsenal and a holistic arsenal in terms of anybody's health. Okay, let's talk about, we just have a minute before our first break okay. here. What about symptoms? How does somebody know if they're facing the problem of needing detoxification? Difficult, because the first symptoms can be nondescript. You know, increased fatigue, reduction of short-term memory, not long-term, like where I left my car and keys, not where I went to high school, uh, reduction of attention span, de uh, some kind of skin dis disruptions and so forth, increased acne. So they're very nondescript. That's when you would consult a health professional. Tests can be done. You can measure levels of lead, pesticides, and so forth, and in fact, then look at whether detoxification indicated. So intestinal problems that are so prevalent right now could be one of those situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we want to tell you, we're going to go to break now. Michael Wisner is our guest. This is so important. We're going to tell you what you do, how you do it to get the, the toxins out of your body. You have to know that. So on Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, we want to help you be all that you can be. Michael Wisner is going to help us do that in the second part of the show. You stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. We're going to detoxify together. This program Today on Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, we're visiting with Michael Wisner, and we're talking about detoxification. You say that doesn't apply to me. 
you better listen on. We're going to be talking about how it probably does apply to each and every one of us, and most importantly, what we can do. Michael, let's get back to the subject at hand. You know, I, I can feel people saying, well, I might have had a toxin or two, but they've gone through my body. I don't have any of those symptoms that we don't even know if we have a lot of times. Mm -hmm. How long do these toxins, environmental toxins, stay in our bodies? For life. You could have been exposed to the pesticide DDT in 1972. It was banned in this country in 1976. You can find DDT in everyone's body today in this country. Oh. These okay. chemicals, because they're man-made, and they were in many cases, like pesticides, designed to persist. They, were chemi they, do, they do it very well. They do what they were designed to very well. But that doesn't work well for us if they're in our, human, in, in our body. So we have to do something. We, we all have residual toxins, and so we have to manage those, preferably get them out, if not at least get them in a form where our bodies are not responding negatively to them based on being minimal in amount. That's right, because they're going up over time. The amount I had in my body when I was 30 is higher when it's 35. Because they go in, they don't come out. Well, also, these, I'm sure, can have a systemic approach, too, meaning that if they are, let, let's say we go on, on a diet mm -hmm. and we lose 50 pounds, these fats are put back in our bloodstreams. That's called systemic, so that we're actually distributing these toxins throughout our bodies into all our tissues and organs. Right Absolutely. Now. now, while losing 50 pounds might be good for you aesthetically and for cardiovascularly, okay, when you, con when you lose that much weight, you're actually concentrating the toxins because they don't metabolize in the remaining fat when the fast or the diet is over. So in fact, at the end of that 40, 50 pound weight loss, you're actually pound for pound more toxic. Okay, well, we want to point out, we don't want you to not think about losing weight because we're Should an obese do. nation right you now. Bet. We want to lose that weight. We want to do it smart. So I guess that brings us to the obvious question. What do we do? to detox our bodies. You've been at this. You have a program. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, program? I mean, it's as I mentioned earlier, it's covered in the book, Clear Body, Clear Mind. I mean, that's the book. Read the book. That's a simple, easy, inexpensive thing to do. You know, that's you can get it at Barnes & Nobles or any major bookstore, Walden's, uh, all the major borders, they all have it. It was on the New York Times bestseller list just this year. Um, that said, starting with the book, the program itself that we researched, is compon its components are very simple and very holistic in a way. Physical therapy exercise, not to uh, make you Jane Fonda, but simply get the circulation up in combination with a oral uh, administered dose of niacin, nicotinic acid, vitamin B3. Niacin for years has been shown to increase fat mobilization. That in combination with exercise now moves the chemicals and the fat from the fat stores into the bloodstream, number one. Okay, so, now wait a minute, how niacin? I know a few people are afraid of niacin sure. because they feel like they get a niacin flush, which right. is that feverish feeling. Yes. Actually, it's, the feeling is more frustrating than the actual physical effect for most people. Absolutely. But how much niacin should be oh, you involved start. Here? You start off, as the book describes, you start at very low dosage, 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams. If you don't take it on an empty stomach, you might not even have an unpleasant flushing consequence. Yes. But also, that, as, you, as you, I think, mentioned well, niacin flush leaves very quickly and it has no detrimental effect. The niacin combined with the exercise increases the mobilization. Then what Mr. Hubbard did, which was very elegant, and because it was so simple, it was brilliant, which was how do you get them out if they don't easily metabolize? Through the skin. The largest excretory pathway of the human body is the skin. Both the sebaceous skin oil glands and the sweat glands, the water glands, heat will increase both the rate and the volume of the excretions through the skin. So have a person go in a low temperature sauna, not like a health club, they're too hot, highly ventilated, comfortable, and sweat 10 or 15 minutes. Come out and replace the salts, the minerals, which you're also sweating out, along with supplementing that with antioxidants to support the antioxidation, you know, pr principle of vitamin E, K vitamin carotene C and so forth and a polyunsaturated short fatty acid oil which is added to the diet to help reduce endohepatic recirculation and help eliminate some of this through the to the bowel. Okay, now anytime we have a sweating process, we mm -hmm. also need to get drink a lot of good Lots quality of water. water. You bet. And that's also something that's monitored daily on the program. Now, it's interesting, when we did the research, Frank, we took people who had exposures to, say, drugs in the past, THC from marijuana, uh, heavy metals, lead, pesticides. We actually collected their sweat, had it analyzed by an independent government lab, and sure enough, coming out during the program, lifetime levels of DDT, THC from marijuana, uh, PCBs from electrical devices, the stuff actually coming out. What moreover was important is this process is repeated, the niacin dosages are increased on a very safe gradient over a course of two to three weeks, it's done a few hours a day, it doesn't take up your entire life, and sure enough, at the end, we saw remarkable results. People thought clearer, 
they were happier, which we couldn't quantify scientifically, right. but they surely were happier. They were more at peace with themselves. They uh, had a lot more energy. And of course, the scientific tests, the biopsies, the blood tests, and so forth, actually showed the chemical reduction had occurred. Okay, now we've talked about the, that aspect. What about the, the diet? What about the nutritionally? How do we help ourselves to detox? Very important. I think one of the things on the program that's recommended, and it's not a major dietary change, but the increase of fresh, not overcooked vegetables for their mineral and fiber content and, and increase in fiber. I think dietarily, you know, what we can do in our day-to-day -day life is eat lower on the food chain, less fatty meats, more grains, more fresh vegetables, not a lot of refined carbohydrates or refined sugars, they're not good for you, and a sensible exercise program is a great maintenance program. I think that the Hubbard program is a great foundation to start any of that from because you start with a clean slate. Sounds like you're turning the food pyramid rather upside down yes. here. Yes, <laughs> slightly. <laughs> I think everybody's beginning to rethink our high carb diet. That's Absolutely. going by the wayside. And we now know there's good fats, there's bad fats, trans fats are out. How do we get our children back to where we, we don't need the detox extent we do? How do we convince them that these toxins are out there, the supersizing, the obesity, all of these things, all the things in the air? How do we, I guess adults too, how do you get them where basically they don't need detox? Do you have a suggestion? Well, I think unfortunately we have to clean up the environment better so they don't because whether it's in the womb or through mother's breast milk or wherever, they're going to get exposed. We know that in science. So ultimately, I think every one of us can benefit at least at this stage from a detoxification of the appropriate type. But that said, I think prevention is the best thing to do. I mean, we, uh, I, I co-direct the Kirstie Alley Foundation and we do environmental education for children. It's a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We distribute an environmental booklet, which if someone contacts me through the website, I can, I can forward it to them. It's no charge to school and have done for 10 years to schools, civic groups, religious organizations, and so forth, which is a kid's booklet on what are the problems and what they can do I see. in the home, at school, on diet, on, and, and, and food, and so forth. And so be happy to you know, forward that booklet on to anybody well, who would like it for their it. children. You bet. Michael Wisdom, we thank you so much. You have to take charge. That is the point. You can't have someone do it for you. Your life is in your charge and that of your family. You don't want to have to detox. If you're already in that situation, you are. Listen to the advice of Michael Wisner. The book's great, but at all costs, you have to take charge so that you don't need it in the future. That's lifestyle changes. We want to thank our special guest today, Michael Wisner, and invite you to call us, 888-881-8283, for information about our guest, our topic today, or any aspects of healthy, wealthy, and wise. Or go to our website at hwwshow.com for complete information, including guests and topics of future shows. Remember, you can call our Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise radio broadcast with your health questions from 8 to 9 a.m. each weekday at 800-281-8255. This is Frank Jordan asking you to praise the Lord, pass the ammunition while being healthy, wealthy, and wise. Until next time, go in good faith and good health.